Hello, everyone. Welcome to LAMP Basic TCM or LAMP TCM and Acupuncture Lecture Series for Beginners. Welcome. Uh, this is now our 52nd episode. Let's start with the first presentation. Let's welcome Mamlin Galarita of Quezon City. Good afternoon, Mamlin. Good afternoon, Dr. Hector. Good afternoon, everyone. So let's start today's discussion with the five element disharmonies after last week's five element interrelationships. So, um, for we'll start the five element disharmonies discussion with the generating sequence patterns. These are conditions of deficiency induced by the mother element. So first among the disharmonies, wood not generating fire. So if we relate this to organs, it's liver not nourishing the heart. This could lead to um, timidity, lack of courage, and this indecision, indecisions, palpitations, and insomnia. Next in the among the disharmonies is fire not generating earth. So relating to the organs, this is a disharmony between the, the heart and the spleen. This could lead to loose tools, chillness, weakness of the limbs. Next is earth not generating metal. This is where this is a disharmony between um, the spleen and the lungs. This could lead to phlegm in the chest, cough, and tiredness. Next is metal not generating water. So this is this is a disharmony between the, the lung, which is the metal element, and the kidney. So this could lead to cough breathlessness, loss of voice, and asthma. Next is water not generating wood. So this is a disharmony between the kidney and the liver. So this will present with dizziness, blurred vision, headaches, and vertigo. Okay, from the generating cycle disharmonies, we now go to the over-controlling sequence patterns. So first up is wood overacting on earth. So comparing to the organs, this is liver overacting on the spleen. So here we have hypochondrial or epigastric pain, feeling of distension, irritability, loose tools, poor appetite, and greenish face. Next is earth overacting on water or spleen overacting on kidneys. So if this is the case, there will be edema, difficult urination, and a yellow face. If there is water overacting on fire or kidneys overacting on the heart, there will also be edema of ankles, backache, cold feeling, dizziness, expectoration of thin watery sputum, and palpitations. If the heart overacts on the lungs or fire overacting on metal, there will be cough with profuse yellow sputum, feeling of heat, and a red face. Lastly, there is metal overacting on wood or liver or lung overacting on the liver. So this will present with tiredness, irritability, distension, cough, and a white face. So this is all for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mom Lin. We continue with uh, topic number two. Uh, we will uh, resume where we left off, yes, last time. 
the wood element. So the liver stores and releases blood. When you see signs of blood deficiency, such as paleness, tiredness, dizziness, feeling of numbness in the hands and legs, long menstrual cycles with scanty bleeding in women, this is called liver blood deficiency. It is not necessary that a patient's hemoglobin count should be low to substantiate such a diagnosis. The symptoms are sufficient. In some patients, this could be a temporary state following an accident with much loss of blood or a serious illness or childbirth. The symptoms could improve after a short period of blood building. We can assist blood building by tonifying the heart yin and yang, as uh, it is the heart that nourishes and synthesizes blood. Excessive and spontaneous bleeding can occur from any organ, but the underlying cause of this bleeding lies in the dysfunction of the liver. So when the liver has fire heat, leading to yin deficiency and yang excess, that makes it release too much blood and store too little. So why does the bleeding occur in different organs in different cases? Because the organ where the bleeding occurs is also in a fire heat condition. So this is what we mean by the term fire heat and why bleeding occurs in these cases. So in the case of a balanced organ, if the yang increases in this organ, it will react by increasing the yin as well. This situation, as you can see from the tower diagram, is called dump heat. So both the yin and the yang would go up. So dump heat with heat and fluid. This is how the body tries to balance the situation. It reacts with fluid in order to control the yang. This is possible as there is a good amount of fluid in the body. But... When there is less fluid or when you have dryness and uh, inflammation or fever, there is not sufficient yin to react with. The only way to balance the situation is by eliminating the heat. The quickest and most effective way to eliminate heat is to bleed, hence the bleeding. This is not slow bleeding or spotting. It is arterial bleeding, red and fluid and excessive. Thank you very much for your attention. We bring you Mom Lean Galerita once again uh, for the topic on menstruation. Good afternoon, Mom Lean. Good afternoon, Olet. So we have a new topic, which is menstruation. I'm sure Marami Makaka relate dito. So but to start with, if the patient is of menstruating age and is currently on the contraceptive pill, the doctor who is the author of this article asked the reason for this as some patients take the pill in order to regulate periods or sometimes for dysmenorrhea. There would be no use asking them about their period cycle. Also, it would be useful to know if they use an intrauterine device as a contraceptive method, as this increase the menstrual bleeding. If a woman is in her menopausal years and is taking hormone replacement therapy or HRT, again, the patient is asked for how long has she been, taken, she been taking the HRT. Problems such as uterine fibroids or excessive bleeding or severe postmenopausal syndromes could be the reason for taking HRT in the first place. If a woman is menstruating without external hormones, then her menstrual cycle and the quality of bleeding are good indication of the energy status in the kidney and the urinary bladder and the storing or releasing of blood and the free-flowing status of blood are both indicators of liver function. So we have to note that if, water, if the water aspect of kidney and urinary bladder are to be tonified, 
both lung and large intestine provide energy for this. But if the reproductive system is to be tonified in the kidneys, then the energy is provided by the spleen and the stomach. So here are power diagrams for different um, patterns related to menstruation. First is when there is kidney chronic heat and yin deficiency. In this pattern, we can see short cycles, um, which means less than 28 days. The menstrual cycles is less than 28, 27 days. Because normal around 28 to 30 days. So here, yang is in normal condition and there is the yin is deficient. Next is kidney and liver fire heat. Uh, looking at the tower diagram, yang is in excess uh, from, and while yin is deficient, much more deficient than in the yin deficiency earlier discussed. So here, we also have short cycles. And aside from that, there will be excessive bleeding. The third is um, kidney yang deficiency. So in kidney yang deficiency, um, the yin, kidney yin is in normal condition, while yang is deficient. This could lead to longer or long uh, menstrual cycle, which is longer than 32 days. Next is liver blood deficiency. Here, um, liver blood is deficient while well, she is at the normal level. So this could lead to long cycles and little bleeding. Next is urinary bladder, which could, could also mean the uterus and liver blood stagnation. Here we have an excess um, blood, but she is deficient. So this leads to blood stagnation, and this could manifest with dark, clotty bleeding. Next is spleen chi deficiency. Here, um, blood is at the normal level, while chi is deficient, and this could present with continued spotting either between or at the end of the menstruation. Next pattern is kidney and yang deficiency. Here, both kidney yin or yang are deficient. And this could lead to regular cycles, one time short and long the next time. So next pattern is liver blood and chi deficiency. Here, both liver blood and chi are deficient. This could lead to irregular bleeding, one time much and little the next time. So for halimbawa ngayong buwan na to, sobra-sobra ang bleeding. Next time naman, parang kakaunti lang. Next pattern is liver and urinary blood or the uterus blood stagnation. Here, we have um, an excess of liver blood, but she is deficient, so this could lead also to blood stagnation. And this will present with dysmenorrhea at the onset of menstruation. The last pattern is liver and urinary bladder fire heat. Um, here we have a very deficient yin and an excess in yang leading to fire heat. So this could lead to dysmenorrhea during the, the time of maximum bleeding. So that's all for today. Join us again as we continue our discussion on menstruation the next time. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Ma'am Lin. Next, we talk about the metal element.
Okay. When you have a condition called the long yang axis, of course, we need to sedate. So we, we sedate the chic left point, which is long six. Uh, this a, a chic left point sedates any excess in an acute state. We also sedate Li2, which is the sedation point of the large intestine. Uh, we indirectly sedate the long yang by sedating the copal yang organ. We also use long 11, uh, bleeding. This is the distal most point of the long meridian. Bleeding, we have learned, helps to release heat. Long 11 bleeding releases the heat from the nose, throat, and more superficial areas. If the patient has bronchitis or pneumonia, venous bleeding from a point near lung 5, so the C point, the sedation point of the lungs would work better. Out of the five element points of the lung meridian, lung 11 is the most distal point and lung 5 is the most proximal. The proximal point works better for the organ and the distal point treats the sensory organs. And uh, finally, bladder 13, we do bleeding cup on the bakshu point. The bakshu point is another local point for the organ. And using bleeding cup here is a very effective way to eliminate heat from the internal organ. Then we talk about uh, lung yang or lung chi deficiency. We use uh, bladder 13, bakshu point, because needling the bakshu improves the chi, while hot needles can increase the heat. So you also improve the chi. Lung 10 is the fire point or the grandmother point, and it increases both yang and chi. Li11, the tonification point, this is to indirectly tonify lung yang and chi. Breathing exercises, moderate physical exercise, such as walking, will be beneficial. Eating spicy food improves lung yang. Lung in deficiency. Lung one, the front view point of the lung, pulls and calms. Lung eight, the metal point or the house element point, tonifies only the house energy, which is yin. Lung 9, even as a tonification point, would increase yin and yang in a 90 is to 10 ratio. As a yin deficiency could often cause a recurrent excess of uncontrolled yang, it is safer to tonify only the yin with lung 8. Then we need to humidify the rooms, drink water, and eat white rice. These are simple but effective ways to support the treatment. Lung yin excess. Uh, we, uh, there's too much yin, so we need to sedate the yin by using the she cleft point, lung six, or the acute point. We also do lung five sedation, uh, kidney five sedation. In acute situations, kidney five helps to sedate the sun organ. So, so this is the kidney, so energy could flow from the excess organ to its sun. Avoiding salty foods and milk products will help to eliminate water and reduce dampness. Then uh, hyperactivity of lung yang, we have to sedate Li4 and tonify lung seven. Then uh, we sedate lung six using, uh, which is the chic left point, okay? And also uh, lung one, which is the front view point, which can cool and calm. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's welcome Mamlin Galerita once again for the review of Chi. Good afternoon, Ulit, Mam Lin. Good afternoon, Ulit. Good afternoon, everyone. This topic is already very familiar to all of us. When we talk about chi, it, um, we all know this is part of the vital substances. 
the Chinese medicine um, sees the working of the body and mind as a result of the interaction between certain vital substances, which are qi, blood, essence, blood of leaves, and shen. So what is qi? Sometimes it's spelled uh, C-H-I, qi, or what is known as qi in Japan, energy or life force. It is the energy of the body, of the meridians, of food, of the universe. He is a refined substance transformed by the internal organs to nourish the body, mind, or spirit. He manifests both on the physical and spiritual level. A simple look at Qi, we see it as much more than a conventional view of energy, like words or drama. Is also nutrients, nutrients from food, which are a main supply of energy. So, it, um, food is also a form of chi. Carbohydrate is another name for chi, which powers the body. The other essential nutrients are also chi, only in different forms that can be felt. in material form. So she changes form according to its locality and function. It is a constant, it is in a constant state of, state of flux, and its immaterial and material state constantly varies. When she condenses, it accumulates the form of cell shape. Example, for circulation of qi in the body can result in condensation of qi to form lumps, masses, or tumors. Another example, um, there, uh, we could also feel stress knots in the upper the pubian. So what are the characteristics of the Chinese character for qi? He is, um, in Chinese, translate to steam rising from rice as it cooks in Chinese character. So the meaning that she, meaning that she can be light as steam, parang yung bagong sa in, mas ano sa, kasi yung daan ng steam na galing sa bagong sinahin. But she can also raise energy, can warm, can be solid as rice, and it's like rice that gives energy to live. Basically, there are two types of chi. One is free heaven, and the other is post heaven chi. The free heaven chi, or the ancestral chi, is the chi that we are born with. It's limited. And the quality and amount of this chi represents our basic constitution. The second type is the post heaven or the acquired chi. It's derived from the food that we eat and the air that we breathe. The quality of post heaven chi depends on our lifestyle habits, such as the quality, balance of emotions, physical exercise, and so on. So, discussing further on pre-heaven chi. Pre-heaven chi or the yuan chi is derived from our ancestors. It is gathered and formed at conception. It is stored in the kidneys. It determines basic constitution, strength, and vitality. It's also essential to growth and development. Pre-heaven chi can be conserved but not replenished, so it is already fixed at birth. It is a composite of the essence, or qing, and the yuan qi, or the original qi. 
Post heaven chi, on the other hand, or the post natal chi, is derived from food and lifestyle. This can be stored and replenished. It is a composite of wu chi, or the chi of food and drink, and hong chi, or the air chi, which forms our zong chi, or the gathering chi. Post heaven chi is influenced by the food quality balance of emotions, physical exercise, and lifestyle habits. So this is all for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mom Lin. We will continue with water element. We are still on the concept. Vital essence governs growth, development, and aging. Kidney yang, boosts bone growth, and the yin nourishes the bones. The period of maximum growth in a child's life is comparable to the season of summer, where all trees show upward growth. The bones, just like the trees, need heat in order to grow. So kidney yang provides the heat or yang for this bone growth. Kidney yang is at its highest during puberty, the time the reproductive system becomes active. This is also the time in which a child grows rapidly. There could be problems if a child grows too fast within a too short a time or if growth is retarded. If a child grows too fast during any particular period, their young is very high during this time. And in addition, they do not have enough yin to nourish this abnormal rapid growth. Therefore, the child develops weak bones and joints, especially in the back and knees. Kidney yang deficiency also causes stunted growth or a chondroplasia, though the bones are not thin or underdeveloped. Both these problems can be treated effectively provided they are treated early and over a longer period. Now, let's talk about rapid growth with poor development of bones and joints. So this is what we call hyperactive yang in the kidneys. Okay, so uh, treatment, uh, we use kidney four, which is a luo point. It tonifies yin and sedates the yang. Ren three, which is the front move of the bladder, Spleen 6, meeting point of the three yin meridians of the leg, increases the yin. Bladder 40, earth point, which is the grandmother point of the bladder, which tonifies the yin. Drink more water, eat more raw vegetables and fruit to cool the body. Changing eating habits is essential in order to cool the body. Baths and swimming also increases the water yin. Treatment should be given once a week, 10 to 12 sessions in a course of treatment, then stop and follow up after one month. If necessary, the treatment can be restarted and given once fortnightly for another 12 sessions. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's welcome Mam Lin once again for Meridian Theory. Good afternoon, Alet. So for today, after our discussion on the regular meridians, we now go to the extra points. The first point is extra point UE9. It is located slightly proximal to the margins of the webs between the fingers on the border of the red and white skin. These uh, uh, interdigital points are used to eliminate pathogenic factors, especially wind from this area, and are good in the treatment of eczema and arthritis. Next point is extra point LE2. 
It is in the center of the upper border of the patella. This is used as part of the patella triangle, and this is point four knee pain. Next point is LE5. It is located with the, with the knee flexed. This pair of points is located inferior to the patella, medial and lateral to the patellar ligament. Um, this includes the two points. LE, LE5 includes the two points. This is the medial eye of the knee. Um, the medial eye of the knee corresponds to extra point LE4 and the lateral eye of the, um, the knee to stomach 35. LE5, uh, uh, these are points which are used together in the knee with the point um, previously discussed, hooding. hooding. This, they are excellent points for osteoarthritis of the knee and can also be used with hot needles or electrical stimulation. Next point is LE6. It is located on the gallbladder channel of the right leg, approximately one GB34. Palpate, to locate this point, we have to palpate for the most tender point. This point is good for is a good diagnostic point for gallbladder problems if found to be tender. If the patient complains of upper right abdominal pain or upper abdominal bloating, this point could be used. It should be needled with even method in most cases, except in acute pain of the gallbladder, in which case it should be used with the sedation technique. Next point is LE7. Uh, it is located on the stomach channel of the right leg, the most tender point approximately too soon distal to stomach 36. And this point is the appendix point. Again, it is used both diagnostically and therapeutically. If acute pains in the year, in acute pains and the year, diarrhea, it could also be sedated. Next point is LE10, Bafung. Um, these are eight points located on the dorsum of the foot, slightly proximal. To the interdigit to the margins of the interdigital webs. These are wind elimination points of the feet used in arthritis, pruritus, and eczema as points to eliminate pathogenic wind. Because, their because of their proximity to points as, such as liver 2 and stomach 44 and GB 43, these are also used as the wind elimination points of these meridians. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mamlin. <clears throat> okay, we continue with chronic fatigue syndrome. The Chinese concept. Dampness in the head. In the head, dampness obstructs the mind. So when dampness obstructs the mind, it can cause poor memory and concentration. So for those people who can relate to this problem, you might want to take a look at your dampness status, as it obstructs the orifices of the head by preventing the clear chi from ascending and the turbid chi from descending, it also causes a feeling of heaviness and muzziness or fuzziness of the head. These are very common symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome and is an essential feature of 
what some people call true CFS. Dampness in the stomach and spleen. In the stomach and spleen, dampness causes digestive symptoms in the epigastrium and abdomen that frequently accompany CFS. The patient experiences a feeling of fullness and distension in the epigastrium and or abdomen, nausea, poor appetite, sticky taste, loose stools, or constipation. If dampness is associated with heat, there would also be bitter taste and loose stools with offensive odor. And finally, we have dampness in the muscles. Dampness settles in the muscles where it can stay for a long time. Here, it causes a feeling of heaviness of the limbs and muscle ache. The muscles are also very easily fatigued on exertion. Consider muscle ache as also an essential feature of true CFS. The intensity of the muscle ache is directly proportionate to the severity of dampness. The more dampness, the more intense muscle, the muscle ache. Now let's talk about latent heat. Symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome appearing without an acute infection can be explained as a manifestation of latent heat. This concept is very ancient and originally it was used to explain the manifestations of acute heat as a transformation of cold. So the simple questions in chapter 3 says, if cold enters the body in wintertime, it comes out as heat in springtime. Wang Shuha says, in winter cold attacks causing Shanghan disease. In winter, cold attacks causing Shanghan disease. If a person does not fall ill, the cold hides under the skin and in springtime, it changes into heat. That is why it is always advised to wear some shawl over the back of your neck and your shoulder. Yu Tian Chi says, warm disease in spring is due in every case to pathogenic factor lurking in winter. This means that under certain circumstances, a pathogenic factor, wind cold or wind heat, can enter the body without causing immediate symptoms. It then incubates inside the body for some time, turning into heat, then later emerges towards the exterior, causing the person to feel suddenly very tired with weary limbs, slightly thirsty, hot, and irritable. He would not sleep well, and the urine would be dark. At this time, the pulse feels fine and slightly rapid, and the tongue is red. This condition is called latent heat or spring heat, although it can occur in any season and not just in springtime. Thus, the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine says that cold may invade the body in winter without causing symptoms. Cold lurks in the interior, changing into heat and emerging in spring. According to this theory, latent heat emerges in springtime for one of two reasons. Either it is attracted outwards by the rise of yang in the spring, or it is pulled outwards by a new invasion of wind. Three main reasons cause latent heat to emerge in modern patients. Very relatable. Emotional stress, overwork, and a new invasion of wind. So let's take a look at this diagram, which illustrates latent heat, as mentioned in the Yellow Emperor's classic of uh, internal medicine. So during winter, the cold can invade the body uh, without any symptoms. So it invades the body, no symptoms, and then it transforms into heat. And during springtime, it will manifest as heat. Okay, so it emerges in spring. So uh, here is another diagram showing to us the emerging of latent heat in the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine. So if you have uh, 
been exposed to external wind or there is invasion of external wind at, during winter, it does not cause immediate symptoms, incubates inside and turns into heat. And heat emerges towards the exterior as latent heat at springtime. Okay, there are two reasons for this. So there is something in the young energy during spring that uh, attracts the heat, which makes it come out. Or there is a new infection that it, that is attracting the heat outwards. Okay, And all of this will manifest as latent heat. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. We hope that you could join. You can join us again uh, next time. Thank you.